This AQA micro video looks at utility theory. Well, utility is basically a measure that economists use to try and gauge the satisfaction or the benefit that people get from consuming goods and services. And it's an important idea to look at because the utility we enjoy affects our willingness to pay for a particular product. So utility is the satisfaction, the well-being, the value, the benefit that we get from consuming goods and services. And it's an idea used to quantify the subjective preferences and the choices of people about what to buy, how much to buy, indeed how to allocate often a, a very tight, limited budget. Now, utility is not directly measurable in a concrete, objective sense, but it is a theoretical idea that economists have used, not without criticism, to help understand and model human behaviour. A key idea is the idea of marginal utility, which is the extra satisfaction, the additional utility, from consuming one more unit of a good or service. Take a consumer, Sarah, she's eating chocolate bars, and we see here her total utility goes up as she consumes more bars in a given time period. But the first unit, the first bar gives her 20 units of marginal utility, the second bar gives her 15, the third 10, <coughs> the fourth five and the fifth only two units and this brings in the idea of the law of diminishing marginal utility which states that as a person consumes more units of a particular product when keeping the consumption of other products the same the marginal utility from each unit will tend to decrease the more you consume of something the less extra satisfaction you get. In our example here, as we're having more slices of pizza, the first slice gives a high marginal utility of 20 units, and then it falls, 15, 10, 5, 2, and 1. In fact, the sixth slice of pizza barely adds to our total utility. Now, the hypothesis of diminishing marginal utility supports the idea of a downward sloping demand curve, because as people consume more of something, the extra satisfaction they gain becomes smaller, and in theory, other things remaining the same, they won't be willing to pay as much for those subsequent units. People are willing to buy more of a good when the price is lower, because the cut in price, a discount, makes each additional unit more valuable in terms of the satisfaction or the benefit it provides. There is something called disutility, <clears throat> the opposite of utility in a sense, and it represents the negative feelings, the discomfort, the pain, the displeasure associated with certain activities. And, and sometimes it can be the case uh, that uh, you are afflicted by unpleasant uh, spam advertising, long queues at stores and banks and for transport services. Unpleasant work gives you disutility, often leads to uh, work-related stress or WRS. The disutility over time of consuming fast food, which causes chronic health problems, and travelling, of course, in crowded commuter public transport. And examples such as perhaps invasive surveillance and the social isolation or the damaging effects of criticism on social media. Now, it's important to note that what might cause disutility to one person may not necessarily do so for another. So people's preferences, their tolerances, the circumstances vary so much. So disutility is, again, subjective and context dependent. So uh, we often say that rational consumers aim to maximise utility from a given budget. Now you consume up to the point where the marginal utility is zero if you want to maximise utility in the sense, obviously it depends on the price, but uh, our seventh slice of pizza, for example, might only uh, give us the same utility, 53 units, in which case the marginal utility is zero. So if you don't have to pay for something, um, you maximise utility when the marginal utility is zero. You consume up to the point where an additional unit no longer provides any satisfaction. Rational choice theory assumes that consumers always behave rationally in allocating their limited budget between different products. They're looking to maximise satisfaction from their purchases. <clears throat> once you've paid, for example, once you've paid to go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, uh, the price doesn't vary if you have an extra helping or an extra course. So in theory, you should gorge yourself and continue to eat up to the point where the utility is zero. Of course, in life, complex pricing, different prices, different products, multiple products, what you should aim to do according to this theory 
is maximise the utility per pound or per dollar spent by comparing relative prices. So here's a simple example. Uh, the idea here is that if you have multiple products, in this case two products A and B, the condition for maximising utility is that the consumer equalises the marginal utility per pound spent. So product A has a marginal utility of 15, a price of five pounds, so it's three utils per pound, if you like. Product B, um, higher marginal utility, 80, if you buy it to the next unit, but the price is much higher, 20, but it gives four utils per pound spent. And the condition, actually, although you don't necessarily need to know this, is that they, to maximise utility, it's the marginal utility of, of product A divided by the price of product A is equivalent, equals the marginal utility of product B divided by the price, where MU is marginal utility and P is price. Now, here in our situation, the consumer would be better off allocating more of their income towards product B because they're getting a higher marginal utility per one pound spent. But of course, consuming more of B might then cause the marginal utility to fall if the law of diminishing utility holds. So utility, uh, good to know what it is, uh, what it's designed to reflect, and in particular you need to know the law of diminishing marginal utility and how it relates to people's willingness to pay for goods and services. Thanks for joining in, take care, and uh, see you soon.